Boop, Graham. <laughs> I think I hurt myself doing that. That's great. That's a Canadian monkey. It's the day after Canada Day right That's now. That's right, yeah. Look at that, interesting. Happy day after Canada Day. So we have a, a couple of announcements to start today's episode. Mm-hmm. First of that, we have something resembling a sponsor. Ah, There's a, a company someone's foolish enough to give us money? Uh, no, well, not quite yet. They <laughs> give us money after we get some history oh, okay. them. But a company called Checked. Uh, out of New York, does in-home blood testing. And if you visit their website, go to sciencemonkey.ca slash checked, C-H-E-K-D. sciencemonkey.ca slash C-H-E-K-D. If you buy something, we'll get a piece of that. They'll come test blood in your home? or No, they'll do your blood testing. They won't bring someone else's blood okay. to your home. <laughs> right. That costs extra. Okay. Uh, also, if you want to buy our Amazon books, and who doesn't really? Go to uh, sciencemonkey.ca slash Amazon, and uh, we don't need the money, really. So if you like the title, No, I just want there. the rankings to go up. Right That's now, I'm going to think at 353,000 or something. It'd be nice to bump that up a bit. Yeah. yeah. We also have a correction to make. So uh, last episode, I did something stupid. I talked about bird... Big surprise there. <gasps> bird-hipped and lizard-hipped dinosaurs. Mm. And I, I thought said, you were just making that up. <laughs> no, they're a real thing. <laughs> Uh, and I said that bird hip dinosaurs uh, became birds later on, and lizard hip became crocodilians. And I was totally wrong, of course. The correct fact is I know crocodiles don't come from dinosaurs. They're a separate branch altogether. Bastards. There was something, a conflation of the bird hip versus lizard hip. Right. Apparently, bird hipped or Nishian, or, mm-hmm. or I can't pronounce it, or Nathician dinosaurs don't necessarily become birds. birds right. They just okay. happen to have. Bird shaped hips. hips. Okay. But uh, at least I was right in the sense that we do designate the two categories mm-hmm. of dinosaurs based upon their hips. Or they become British women. Wow. <laughs> he said that. I didn't say that. Birds. <laughs> I get it. Okay. <laughs> I'm not talking about what they look like. <laughs> You're one of those days. Hey, we're, we're outside now, actually. We're um, in our new Science Monkey Studios That's in right. Toronto, which is Graham's home. We're in the outdoor part. Yeah, so if you hear some funny things happening, it's because uh, Actual nature. Actual live little dinosaurs are in the trees right Science now. Science is happening all around singing us. Singing to us. <laughs> Did dinosaurs tweet and sing like birds? Because well, Twitter birds... was invented until the late 90s. Oh, all right. They didn't tweet. T- tyrannosaurs have problems holding their phone. Right? <laughs> it keeps on falling out of their, their little claws. Like, couldn't reach the hashtag symbol. Wow. Okay. Today is actually a special day in Toronto. It's yes. the day of the Pride Parade. Right. So it's we've... been Pride Week or Pride, Pride Month, week, exactly. actually. Yeah, all of June, I think, was Pride Month. A lot of Pride going on. Mm-hmm. And in in recognition of, of Pride-ish things, we thought we'd tackle something relevant to Pride. And uh, I sent Graham this morning. He hadn't had a lot of time to look at mm-hmm. it yet. Um, this article... Written by our old friend Satoshi Kanazawa. Ah, him. Him, yeah. So you may remember um, Mr. Kanazawa is an evolutionary psychologist who gets in the news a lot and actually pisses off a lot of people because he says interesting, problematic things. Uh, In the past, he's claimed that Africans are less successful because of low IQ and being less physically attractive. He's also founded the idea of the Savannah Principle that talks about our evolutionary heritage in the Savannah, clouding our friend-making abilities today. Stuff that we believe is problematic. And, and he was the guy who was saying having fewer friends makes you smarter. Right. right. Yeah. I think he's trying to rationalize. Right. His yeah, his lifestyle. lack of friends. Yeah. So his uh, new paper, which is an opinion piece, it's not based on fact, and I'll, I will link to it uh, in the website, sciencemonkey.ca. It's called Possible Evolutionary Origins of Human Female Sexual Fluidity. And in it, he posits, mm-hmm. that word again, yeah. posits, the possibility that... Um, there is an accepted, though not necessarily based on evidence, uh, a belief that female sexual fluidity is more so than male sexual fluidity, meaning that women are more open to bisexual and omnisexual experiences mm-hmm. than are men, supposedly. Mm-hmm. I don't know how true that is, but that's the assumption. And he, uh, he suggests that the reason for that is because historically, having women more attuned to the possibilities of intimacy with their sister wives or other members of harems or harem-like situations are more uh, advantageous to reproduction. Wow. I know. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's all <laughs> trapped into these male, male fantasy worlds. I mean, it seems to me that a problem with studying sexuality at all is, is the one of observation and measurement, right? So how do you 
how do you get an honest observation about something that's quite intimate like that? You have to ask people, yeah. right? And that's the and problem. That's the problem it's perception yeah. stuff. I will link as well to a presentation by Dr. Lisa Diamond, who is a professor in Utah. And she has a, a great selection of data uh, collected from large surveys from around the world that mm-hmm. suggest that women are actually are more heterosexual than, mm-hmm. than men are. Right. Again, I, I don't put a lot of stock in either one of these positions, mm-hmm. but the data clearly can swing either way. Of course, you were using the term women and men as stable labels. Stable labels. Stable labels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, themselves. Which stables are you visiting? Which they're not, right? Because right. we have to draw a distinction between biological sex, gender, mm-hmm. and sexuality. Those are three different things. Right? That's right. So and these are all relatively recent concepts as well. If you go back thousands of years to ancient societies, you probably had different definitions of sexuality. Right. For example, was Alexander the Great gay or straight? Mm-hmm. Right? I don't know. No one knows. Uh, depending or on your... is a biologically born man who identifies as a woman who then wants to be with other women sexually, is that a woman being sexually fluid? Right. Some people will criticize us by saying we're politicizing these things that are scientific. But in response to that, let me suggest this. If you wear glasses, are you disabled? Mm, yeah. All right. Uh, if you've been accommodated for your lack of... Glasses are like wheelchairs for the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> right? so, so dis- that was a line is- from Veep, sorry. Oh, <laughs> Disability is socially constructed, so mm-hmm. possibly mm-hmm. gender is as well, right? Yeah. So these In fact, I'd flip it around and say it's not that we're politicizing science, but the science itself is political. I mean... You hear the siren in the background, right? It's like you're breaking some sort of social laws. <laughs> the science police are coming to get me. <laughs> Obviously, it depends on which realm of inquiry you're in. So if you're talking about astrophysics, then maybe politics doesn't go into it as much, unless you're trying to use physics to justify whether we should go colonize other worlds and something like that. But in the human realm, yeah, there's, there's going to be political implications. The temptation to, to see gender or sexual fluidity mm-hmm. as being an evolutionary uh, thing. There's another commentary I'll link to from medicaldaily.com that suggests that the evolutionary advantage to these same-sex relationships in women lend themselves to explaining other kinds of puzzles in human sexuality, mm-hmm. like why are men aroused by lesbian sex? Mm-hmm. Why is there synchronization in you know menstruation? Right, where girlfriends, menstrual mm-hmm. cycles all mm-hmm. line up together, that might be explained by this tendency towards sexual fluidity, or not. So, yeah, do you know, have you done some reading on that? Or what? A little bit, not not a whole lot. What would the reason for synchronization of otherwise? Yeah. Well, it seems that uh, women in a, in a given community, if they're going to reproduce at the same time, that's mm-hmm. advantageous. Mm-hmm. If you go back long enough to our nomadic ancestors, it's advantageous for people to reproduce at the same time so they can move together with the same aged children i see mind you i don't see how a few weeks difference Mm -hmm. makes that much of a or you could argue that a diversity of menstrual cycles would actually mean reproduction throughout throughout a a broader range of time and we're just throwing theories out here there's no evidence for this i mean it's entirely possible that maybe there is a time when women and men were separate and you had like one day visitation from the sperm donor mm-hmm, right. <laughs> and he had to make sure he came when everyone was fertile who knows <laughs> i mean uh, this kanazawa is a kanazawa yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's probably not comfortable with the idea that that we were talking about this earlier that men are a sort of genetic aberration that were arised arose <laughs> and are aroused <laughs> so that women can propagate themselves right? we have to be careful we say men and women yeah. i mean the dichotomy, the sexual dichotomy of male versus female arose before human beings arose. Mm-hmm. This goes back hundreds of millions of years, if not more so. So human beings weren't even a, an idea. Mm-hmm. But in happen. terms of uh, embryonic development, sure. we're all female to a certain point, right? And sure. branch off and become male. Yeah. And the, the reason, well, the sexual reason for that, regardless, it, you're right, it predates human beings, is if you have to have sexual reproduction, then you have to have two sexes. But yes. the default sex tends to be female. Is what it looks right. like. Yeah, right. That's correct. Yeah. But I don't know. Well, can we read into that? Right. Nothing. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the yeah. Yeah. Be- Because this is, comes back because we had a discussion about this last. It was the last night, night. The fireworks. Uh, the actual fireworks. <laughs> 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 Where you said, okay, if that's the truth, if that's the case, then men came along later in the evolutionary terms and yeah. so there, therefore we're more evolved right. and then i immediately said well that doesn't mean we're better and you said i didn't say that i just said we're more evolved evolved doesn't necessarily mean better right. and these evolutionary psychologists always want to tie everything back to evolution as if somehow 
that is a sufficient explanation for everything. It's like, okay, we are like this in today's society because we evolved that way. But what do we gain by that? That's just what I don't understand. Uh, well, what we gain by it, I think, is we get to forgive ourselves certain behaviors. Mm. Or maybe we get to make policy that's forgiving towards behaviors. I'm not defending it. I'm mm-hmm. saying that would be the argument for it. But, but This is, is where I think there might be a bit of a political agenda. Oh, totally, totally. If this sort of man behaving badly mm. likes to justify his behavior by saying, I'm, I've evolved that way. Right? Yeah. So, we always look for biological rationalizations for the behavior we already want to support. Mm-hmm. But I, I love the idea of, of how things pass the sniff test. Therefore, they must be true. Mm-hmm. I mean, this sexual fluidity thing passes the sniff test, but it isn't, it isn't necessarily true. There's no evidence mm-hmm. for it. But I love playing this game. Uh, consider this. What, what's the stereotypical things that a heterosexual male finds attractive in a heterosexual female? They tend to be things like uh, symmetry of body. They tend to be things like certain shape. They tend to be youthful characteristics, sexiness, in other words, right? These are what all... What about an ability to hold a conversation? They tend not to. No, okay. We like to think that the things that men find attractive women, stereotypically at, at the base levels, are proxy measurements of fertility. Mm-hmm. Now, what do things that women find attractive in men, stereotypically, they tend to be, we think, power, strength, wealth, mm-hmm. right? Maybe even sense of humor, and those kind, which are proxy measurements of the mm-hmm. ability to, to build nests. Now, if you ask yourself, are the things that men find attractive in women innately female? Yeah. Are the things that women find attractive in men innately male? No. Mm-hmm. So that lends itself to this idea that um, a woman doesn't need a man necessarily to be fulfilled in a relationship. You mm-hmm. can get those same characteristics from other women. Right, right. Whereas a heterosexual man might need female characteristics to be mm-hmm. fulfilled. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying this is the case. I'm mm-hmm. saying that's how this reasoning is sometimes put forward. Right. And this is the school of thought that Kanazawa seems to come from. But I, I have a problem with actually two things. What, with what you just said about Kanazawa is that might be the case in in the first few seconds when you're looking at someone yeah. and deciding whether or not to go up and talk to them or, or but then sure. a ton of other things come into play right they, I mean, they can open their mouth and have a terrible voice sure. or and so i mean it seems to base all of this stuff on these very sort of superficial first reactions yeah. on the other hand yeah. you're speaking from the perspective of a man in his late 40s with mm-hmm. a lot of experience <laughs> if you're a horny 15 year old you're not thinking about that at all mm-hmm. and that's historically who right. reproduces and the other problem, going back to talking about fluidity and sexuality, is, and even if you have all these surveys and so forth, and people aren't being forthcoming, there's some, oh, those are squirrels fighting or mating. I don't know. It's hard to tell sometimes. <laughs> you, can't, you can't make assumptions about people's <laughs> right. lifestyles, Graham. <laughs> um, <laughs> survey the squirrels. And uh, is the problem of context. Right, so human sexuality will look different in an all-male prison than it will in the general yeah, population, that's very true. or in an all-girls school, or right. wherever. Or podcasting. Yeah, or yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Put your it's, clothes back on, <laughs> Sanders. Not that kind of guy. It's very difficult to make any generalizations in this it's realm. True. I think. This is why it was a, a famous series of studies I linked to as well um, around people's responses to pornography, mm-hmm. and this is. It's a great thing for conversations at parties. Right, it's not a great right. thing for science. Um, the studies essentially show that when exposed to certain pornography, men and women respond through their genitalia in different mm. ways. Men respond to lesbian porn, mm. and they respond to hetero porn. These are straight men. Right. Um, but they don't respond to gay porn. Mm. Women respond to all porn. Right. So that kind of led to this way of thinking that homosexuality mm-hmm. is, is more fluid. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if you're measuring uh, uh, sexual responses based on on blood flow through the genitalia, mm-hmm. that's just one measure. Right, you're right, not yeah. measuring the emotional response, yeah. psychological response. Yeah. So who knows what's going on? Or maybe women are just more open-minded about sexuality in general. Well, this yeah. is what they're saying. Yeah. So sexual fluidity is just a measurement of mm-hmm. open-mindedness. Mm-hmm. Now, is that a, a, a constructed, a learned response, or is that mm-hmm. innate? Mm-hmm. So the argument Kanazawa makes is that is an innate response that right. has evolutionary origins. Because we're struggling to be men, to define ourselves as men. But women don't have that responsibility or burden. By the way, uh, Graham is wearing a dress right now. <laughs> it's a sarong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually kind of jealous. Looks, There's looks, nothing sarong with this. It looks pretty comfortable. Yeah, it is. It's very comfortable. <laughs> just, just hope that a wind doesn't come along and blow it up. <laughs> so you had a, a quote from... Uh, for our celestial emporium of, of forbidden knowledge. Oh, it wasn't a quotation so much as a discussion. Oh, okay. Uh, since we are talking about, well, ostensibly we're talking about fluidity and sexuality. What's our segment called, by the way? It's a celestial emporium of... Benevolent. Benevolent knowledge. Yes, yeah, celestial emporium of benevolent knowledge. So cure our music right now. Okay. So 
so there, the Royal Ontario Museum, which is actually just down the road from here, um, has an exhibition, which is, I think, going right through November, so people can go see it themselves if they want. Uh, it's called The the Third Gender in, in Japan, or Edo Japan. So Edo Japan is uh, about 17th century to 18th century uh, Japan. Uh, Edo is the old name of what's now Tokyo, so the, the ruling class was based there. Uh, and among the elite, uh, there was a a uh, group of people called the wakashu wakashu uh means literally young things uh so <laughs> david bowie song yeah and it was the uh, name for men or boys uh when they'd reached adolescence so maybe 10 11 uh but hadn't yet reached manhood at around 15 16 through to 20 so that's basically the 10 years between 10 and 20 adolescent uh, boys were known as wakashu and they shaved their head a certain way so they they had a sort of patch, a kind of triangular patch you could identify uh, them by that patch. And they were allowed to wear certain types of clothing. And they were also the object of sexual desire among men and women, sometimes equally. And so they were referred to in this exhibition, at least as a third gender, a fluid gender. Um, and so these adolescents would be in sexual relationships with men and women. Supposedly, if they were in a sexual relationship with a woman, they would take a more dominant role as a man, quote unquote, but if they're in a sexual relationship with a man, they would take a more submissive role as a woman, quote unquote. And so the, the, the whole identity was based on this fluidity. And some of them were quite famous, lots of paintings, uh, plays, opera performances uh, about them, and they became like celebrities in their own time. Um, and so sometimes they would, they would have patrons uh, who would delay the initiation ceremony to becoming a man, because then that would end their wakashu status so they would push it and push it until they're in their late 20s sometimes and so the edo government actually passed a law that, that you couldn't go past 25 uh, so to keep the wakashu uh, as a defined sort of group of people so you're smirking and laughing no, but, i'm thinking about yeah. um you know the advantage of being bisexual is you expand your friend circles your circle, of, <laughs> circle, of, oh, circle of acquaintances damn it i said <laughs> it wrong damn it but, but oh, yeah. it goes goes beyond that so it gets really interesting the wakashu would dress as men, but a subcategory. Like, they wouldn't dress as women, but they wouldn't dress as adult men. They had their own sort of way of dressing. So the, the type of kimono and so forth. They were. But sometimes the wakashu would impersonate women, so they would dress as women. And then there was a, uh, female performers that would sometimes impersonate wakashu. So you could get into... Sorry, am I pounding on the microphone? So you would get a... Uh, that's not a euphemism, by the way. <laughs> So there was uh, this sort of strange case of like a famous female actress who would impersonate a man who was impersonating a woman. And at that point, it's, your, it's all turtles, I think. It's all turtles. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's talking for saying turtles. Yeah, that's, that's what right. I'm jumping off. I was going to say, do you know the only country uh, whose passports have a third gender on them? Oh, uh, uh, I did know this. And it's just, is it Bhutan or something? No. It's India. India. Oh, yeah, okay. I think. Oh, because there's a class of... Uh, right, the hijra. Yeah, hijra. Yeah, that's right. So you can be um, eunuch. Mm -hmm. They call it eunuch in English, right? There was a controversy recently. Well, not a controversy. A debate around the Ontario health cards. You know, we all have them. Right, yeah. And they, they identify your sexual right. uh, gender. Sexual gender is the wrong word. Mm -hmm. Your sex, your biological sex mm -hmm. on them. And so the people, they're going to take that off. Yes, uh, and then some, that? some doctors were concerned that that would be a problem because biologically, sometimes you treat someone differently mm -hmm. medically if they're. There's a, a debate about that on my Facebook page right now. And yeah. I, I didn't touch it yet. I'm watching right. my students debate amongst right, themselves, right, and yeah. a doctor friend of mine piped up. Yeah, it seems that the um, the weight of people's opinions, at least based upon the sample on my Facebook mm -hmm. page, is that people think it's fine to leave out. Yeah, leave sex. it out. Yeah. You'll find out when you get. I there. doubt the doctor. <laughs> Give me the health card. I have to. You know, exactly, they, yeah. that's not usually the, the thing that they look at. <laughs> What's looking at yeah. is, are you insured? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will the government pay me if I treat you? That's what, that's what mm -hmm. matters. So we have uh, some time left over mm -hmm. for the facts and the furious. Oh, good. All right. So cue music cue the now. Cue music for that. You know, after we have our listeners listening to us for long enough, we don't have to cue them the real music anymore. It'll just play in their heads because they'll have heard it so often. Okay. Science. <laughs> I, I want to start asking you a question. Okay. Because um, you're a Chinese scholar, or a scholar of things Chinese. Yes. That, you're not actually Chinese. No, I'm not. So under Chairman Mao, apparently, uh -huh. every Chinese family was obliged to kill a sparrow every week 
to stop them eating all the rice. Right, I've heard about this, yeah. Why did this fail as a project? I don't know. Was there a traffic in the bringing in dead sparrows over and over again, the That's same one? interesting idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they got paid to bring in the sparrows. They fail because sparrows don't eat rice. Oh, there's the obvious answer. <laughs> Poor sparrows. Apparently, uh, when you know Hitler came to power, uh-huh. the Nazis made it illegal on pain of death for who to give the Heil Hitler salute. One particular class of being was not allowed. Was not give, allowed to give the Heil yeah, Hitler salute. On pain of death. Really? Mm-hmm. Again, I have no idea. What would that be? Apes. Oh, come on. Seriously, because some entertainer had trained some chimps to do oh. it, and Hitler was offended. So, oh. no more apes. You're killing the apes? You should be killing the trainer, at Yeah, least. it's unclear who's, yeah. uh, whose death is wow. required. Did you know that people who are into kinkier sex may be psychologically healthier? I assume as much, because yeah. I'm so healthy. <laughs> it doesn't work the other way around, necessarily. <laughs> okay, after ovulation, a female's eggs is fertile for how long? After ovulation. After ovulation. Three days. Oh, 48 hours. Three days, good guess. Now, what about a man's sperm? How long can a man's oh, sperm two weeks. live in the, in the female body? Two weeks. Two weeks, really? Yeah, wow. That's what I say. Is that right? It says they've documented cases of, of living up for eight days. Eight days. Yeah. 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 That makes so sense. You, could get, uh, you could get pregnant without having, <laughs> what was the word I'm talking about? You get pregnant long after. Not just that, but um, sex. The, the sperm that codes for male or female, mm. I forgot which one it is, uh, well, okay, the, the, the male sperm mm. travel faster and have shorter lives. Right. The female sperm travel slower and right. have longer lives. Right, yeah. So one way to engineer a female child will mm. be to have sex before you ovulate. Right. right? Yeah. And, have that, that's, and have the remaining sperm that are still stuck around female right, sperm, right. they're more likely to. Yeah. And if you want a male child, suppose they have sex standing up. They, yes. They can swim faster against the gravity. There it is, yeah. yeah. That's hashtag science, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> what can a man do at least four times a week? to reduce his chance of getting prostate cancer. Oh, masturbate. Yeah, have an orgasm. Have an orgasm. Yeah. Hang on. Cool. Can ants survive in a microwave oven? Well, not for on, long. With it turned on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for a little while. Uh, yeah, because they're so small they can cr- climb between the microwaves. That is correct. Yeah. <laughs> that is absolutely correct. Because the wavelength of a microwave right. in a microwave is 12 centimeters. Is it really that yeah. big? Yeah. Wow. I was being facetious. I know you were. This is why I'm stuck. <laughs> well, I knew the answer must be yes. Because right, otherwise but I yes, you knew why. <laughs> the microwaves are not very micro then. That's oh, right. In which world is 12 centimeters micro? Let's hope I, I looked that up correctly. Maybe it's, maybe it's 12 millimeters. Yeah, that makes a bit it's more sense. Possible. Back, yeah, because if it's 12 centimeters, you can put the food in and it wouldn't get, wouldn't get hot. Well, anyway, some kind of scientist have to know these things. Oh, okay. 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 You go ahead. Okay. So during World War II, again, Uh U.S. Secret Service tried to do something to Hitler's carrots. The U.S. Secret Service tried to do something to Hitler's carrots. His carrots. His food in general, but his carrots specifically. Well, I'm assuming they're poisoning them somehow. Okay. That would be the first thought. Or psychoactive drug. Except he had food tasters. Food tasters. Ah. So whatever they did to his carrots had to get by the food tasters. But still somehow be detrimental to Hitler. Yes. Um, and it's irrelevant to today's topic. So some sort of uh, something to suppress his sex drive? Sort of. Give him imp- impotence? Sort of. Uh, Very close. Very close. Uh, I don't know. He, they, they, well, they didn't do this, but they planned to, um, uh, to infect or to contaminate his mm. carrots with estrogen. Ah. And the plan was to turn him into a woman. <laughs> Because that's what science was like back then. Right. And they thought it would make him less aggressive uh-huh. and more like his docile younger sister, Paula, who worked as a secretary. Paula? Paula Hitler. Really? <laughs> yeah. Adolf had a younger sister named Paula. Paula. <laughs> oh, and they man. chose estrogen because it's tasteless, would be right. slow and subtle, and would uh-huh. pass the food testers test. And then they thought, let's just have D-Day instead. Exactly. You know, and kill some apes. How long the average vagina is? I'm going to guess it's exactly as long as the average penis, which would be... Um, well, let's see how you answer. This. I know, assuming assuming mine is you know uh, longer than the average. Assuming, <laughs> I'm going to guess four inches. Yeah, that's correct. The average yeah. is but it can expand by two hundred percent. Right, when sexually when sexually aroused. That's right. important. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, that is the average length of most penises around the world, four inches. And did you know you can't say happiness without saying penis? The Sami people of northern Finland. Ah, the Sami people. They use a measurement called the Poron Kusuma, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. What is the Poron Kusuma? 
It's a measurement? Yes, it is a, dis- a measure like, of distance. Okay, okay. Linear measurement of distance. The Probably how long a, a dog can run in one day or something. That's very close. Yeah. It's not a dog, though. It's a reindeer. Reindeer, so How right, long of can a reindeer go yeah. before what? Before it has to stop and drink. Not drink. Have sex? Urinate. Urinate, I'm so, oh. I'm so impressed you got so close to that. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> all right i think we have time for one more i'm gonna give you but one more question that's here. a highly variable uh unit of distance oh, like the foot isn't no no but, but it, what if you just wa- watered your reindeer and they have full bladders and then you take them out for a sure. run You're historically measures of distance have yeah. always been variable uh, i read somewhere and i've not been able to find the source again so i doubt it's true there's a, a chinese measure of distance which is the li. li yeah part's true uh it varied over time each dynasty had its own measurement it's roughly a third of a um, imperial mile by the Qing dynasty i guess anyway i read in one source that the li is a not just a, a measure a static measure of absolute distance but a measure of the effort it takes to cover that distance so li going uphill oh really or greater than That's going downhill but yeah but i wasn't able to find i'll ask you one last question but i'm going to repeat it anyway so <laughs> Even though it's not true. <laughs> okay, so you know, you know Wikipedia. Uh-huh. You know the term wiki. Yes. Wikis are kind of out of out of fashion right, right. now, but they're big in about 10 years Collaborative ago. information right. gathering. Do so you know what the word wiki means? I think, is it from Hawaiian? That's correct. Yeah. I was um, going to give you a, a multiple choice, but you know it, the answer uh, already. Does it mean community or group? Or it something? means quick or fast. Oh, okay. So um, many years ago, I, I had my own wiki right, that yeah. I used to... To collaborate. You and, played with your wiki. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. So what, I go to a conference once mm-hmm. and some woman comes up to me and says, oh, I hear you have a winky. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> and then you fell over and said, I bent my wiki. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, my favorite uh, uh, dig at Wikipedia, which actually Wikipedia is, is much better than it used to be, but uh, it used to be highly variable, right? And I'm mm-hmm. still, there's certain pages which change constantly but yeah like my page which page, they took down all right there you go, go on. um was on the simpsons and <laughs> and uh homer was spouting some misfact of some other misstated fact and then bart said it doesn't say that on wikipedia dad and he said we'll change that when we get home boy. <laughs> <laughs> all right well we're at uh we're at half an hour here really oh, yeah time flies we have to get to the pride parade now tempest fugit so yeah. until next time this is monkey ray and monkey graham oh and we didn't identify ourselves but if you don't know who we are by now go back and listen to the first 11 episodes go to sidesmonkey.ca yeah. and, and buy our books <laughs> <laughs> bye-bye bye-bye